There comes a time in every rotary owner's life where you must perform open rotary surgery on your engine. And part of that was last week and part of that is right now. So what we're gonna do is put together this engine and build it with all these new components, well, new used. Um, the center and iron I actually got from a subscriber of mine. I'll put up the tags right here for Instagram and YouTube. Go uh, follow him, show him some love because he really came in clutch with that. Um, the front iron I was able to get used um, on Facebook Marketplace along with another front rotor is good the rear rotor is the same as before the east shaft is the same um, brand new housings because there's a coating on them um, everything else is the same as it was before but there's new seals so corner seals are new side seals are new um, there's new bearings and everything the apex seals we're putting new apex seals in so all that stuff is new um, hoping that this will last for quite a while but I guess that depends on how well we do this right now building a rotary engine is pretty simple all it is is this front iron we're gonna put the front housing on the front rotor do the apex seals and a bunch of lube the center plate and then the rear housing the rear rotor the rear plate a bunch of lube and I think that's that's all there is to it then we got ourselves an engine that's hopefully built up and won't blow up again, but let's find out. So without further ado, let's build ourselves an engine. The first thing to do is oil up the front plate and bearings. Then the front rotor can go on gear side down to mesh with the front stationary gear. What you're seeing me do now is line up the corner seals with an old apex seal. You'll see me doing this a lot throughout this build and it's very important to do and will save yourself a headache when you go to put the apex seals in. Now time for the apex seals. I'm using Mazda OEM two-piece apex seals, so that little piece that is glued on goes on top. I push it in a bit with the larger spring, then push it down, then seat the smaller spring on the two feet midway down the apex seal. Then it can be pushed all the way down to the bottom. This same process is repeated for all three apex seals. For the center plate, I didn't show this on camera because the cameraman had to help me out with this. He 
He lifted the e-shaft from the bottom as I slid the plate over top and onto the dowels. Now for the rear rotor. Here you see me lining up the corner seals again. I had a bit of trouble with this corner seal spring so you'll see me messing around with it for a while until I get it lined up. Goes to show the corner seal may look lined up but the spring may not be. You have to constantly check to make sure everything is aligned so the apex seal will slide down all the way. You can see Vaseline on the corner seals and side seals. This is to hold all of them in place during assembly and will burn off when the engine is started for the first time. The rear rotor goes on gear up, pointing the opposite direction as the front rotor. So in this case I have the apex seal groove pointed towards the engine stand, while on the front one it was pointed away. You can see a 5 written on the face of the rotor by the top. This was for rotor assembly to match up the correct side seals to the correct grooves on the rotor. I used a side seal clearance of 2 thou for this build. and it's time for apex seals again. Same process here. After the rear plate and stack gear are on, it's time for tension bolts. Be sure to torque them in a specific order and use a torque wrench. Pattern and torque values can be found with a quick Google search.
Now I'm testing end play with the front stack assembled and I'm using a magnetic dial indicator. End play can be changed by using a different letter spacer, but the C spacer is what gave me a value within spec, so I rolled with it. Now it is just the final assembly of the front and put the front cover on. Finally, the oil pan goes on and I'm using a Viton gasket for it. So there you go. I just built my first rotary engine. Now next week we're going to see if, if I did a good job on this because we're going to throw it back in the car and see if it starts up. So I'll see you guys in the next one.